whoa, Nadine exclaimed as she saw the mountain of metal through the bridge's window. Her voice, while still soft, was the loudest Silvani had heard of her yet. On top of that, there seemed to be a slight sparkle in her eyes. The princess had no idea what that was about, but judging by the small alien's behavior, she assumed it was something positive. Impressive, right? Silvani asked, which was answered with frantic nodding. How many guns are on that thing? Besides the two obvious ones, Nadine said, pointing at the two gigantic twin turrets mounted on top of the ship. Well, there are another two on the bottom. Besides those, no idea. Have the humans something like that? The alien girl shook her head. We never encountered alien life forms, and none of our internal wars in the modern age wars were big enough to make it into space. In other words, there was simply no reason to build warfare-capable spacecraft. Our biggest ships are transport ships, and they don't even come close to this. But I have to ask, why are the sides so jagged? Almost looks like a saw blade. Those are angled hangers. The unifier is a carrier. As the unifusher slowly rotated into position, the shutters on the sides of the hangers became visible. Seven hangers on each side, so 14 in total. Each can hold up to 12 frigates. Or first ones know how many fighters, whatever could be needed. Or in our case, a hundred times more than what would be needed. She added with a joking annoyance in her voice. Seriously though, a light carrier would have been more than enough. Her thoughts were interrupted by a noise, and when she looked down, she realized that Nadine was laughing. Not just a slight chuckle, but an honest, heartfelt laugh. She is finally relaxing a bit. You know, Nadine started once she had calmed down. Back home, we have a saying, shooting cannons at sparrows. Silgvani cocked her head. What are sparrows? Oh, small birds around this size, she said, holding her hands slightly apart. Why would you use cannons to... Oh, I get it. Yes, a fitting phrase indeed. They were now facing the side of the unifier, and the shutter of the frontmost hangar opened. Gennett started to rotate their ship to be level with the hangar floor. See that second and third floor there? The platforms can be retracted, and if you do that, you could even fit a heavy cruiser into the hangar. This ship can literally carry an entire fleet on its own. Nadine looked up at her. Is that why she is called the unifier? She? Yeah, don't you consider named ships female? No, we don't. Why would... Anyway, it is named after my ancestor, King Chiron the Unifier. When we made contact with alien civilizations, he advocated that Homai should not be separated into individual kingdoms and that we would have a better position in intergalactic politics if the planet was united. The alien girl cocked her head. Wait, so the other kings just gave up their power? No, of course not. Chiron wanted to form a council instead of a single ruler. And many agreed with him, but unfortunately, not all. When the Separatists realized they were in the minority and wouldn't be able to compete economically, if over half the planet banded together, they wanted to stop the unification by force. That event is today known as the Unification War. After the war was won, the other kings were impressed by the flawless leadership Chiron had shown. They decided that a council would be too slow to react in case of an emergency and surrendered their power to him. Ever since then, my family has ruled over the planet. Nadine's eyes became narrow. Just because they were impressed, doesn't that? Her question was interrupted when Gannat finished his maneuver and opened the comm channel. Relative standstill achieved, horizontal alignment 98.3%. Landing gears are out. Understood. Initiate reverse landing. Er, what is reverse landing? Nadine asked, sounding confused. Instead of answering, Silgvani simply pointed out of the window. Slowly, the unifier crept closer, sometimes slightly correcting its course up or down, until their ship was completely encased in the empty hangar. The shutter closed, and then even slower, everything around them moved upwards, until they were hovering almost directly above the ground. The comm channel opened again. Reverse landing complete. Reactivating artificial gravity. A jolt went through the ship as it fell to the hangar floor. Silvani had to hold onto a console to not fall over. Nadine, however, simply stretched out her arms and moved her hips a little to compensate for the movement. Despite her weight, she had a remarkable balance. The airlock opened and Silvani exited the ship, followed directly by Nadine to show that she was a royal guest. 
The rest of the crew would wait until the greeting was over. As she reached the end of the stairs, a line of soldiers was saluting her in the traditional way. Two arms crossed behind their backs, the other in front of their chest, as they all in unison bowed their heads. Be at ease, she told them, so they knew they could break formation. Where is Admiral Myrden? The soldiers stepped aside and formed a corridor, revealing a vannery that was a fair bit below average in terms of height. Silgvani, who was fairly tall, was therefore forced to look down quite a bit. How come you knew it was me, your highness? Do you know the command rotation schedule? If so, I'm flattered. No, but you are the only one of the admirals who is enough of a show-off to send our biggest capital ship to pick up a single raider. Well, we would have needed to do a maintenance flight soon anyway, so nothing lost. Oh, so you have no qualms about endangering your princess by choosing a ship with which performing a reverse landing is 20 times as hard? Hardly a challenge for our pilots. And in my defense, you never specified the dimensions of your enemy vessel. For a while, the two of them stared at each other in silence. Then together, they started laughing. It's good to see you, Uncle. Likewise. All right, Syl, what happened? Before that, the princess stepped aside. May I introduce you, Nadine of the Humans. Nadine, this is Mirton of Clan Tesvini, current First Admiral of Homie's fleet. Um, Nadine started to fiddle with her improvised poncho, apparently trying to get her arm free. She then struck a weird pose, straightening her back and putting her hand to her head. Sir, Merton laughed. No need to be so nervous. You are a guest of Sill, after all. But I must say it is rare that I don't have to look up. Bwahaha. He then turned back to his niece. An unknown sentient species and a captured enemy vessel. I assume there is a story to be told here. You bet, Uncle. 